Hello, I'm Kathy Evers, the First Lady of Wisconsin, and we, in partnership with the Wisconsin Historical Society, are here to share with you some of the incredible history of women's voting rights. By 1920, women in Wisconsin and throughout the U.S. had won the right to vote. The question then became, now what? There were still significant barriers in place keeping certain people from the polls. Women had to work to be elected to political offices, and many suffragists pushed for another constitutional amendment, one that would make their equal rights law. One group that had yet to gain the right to vote in the U.S. was citizens of Native nations. The 1848 Wisconsin Constitution extended the vote to American Indian men if they were citizens of the U.S. At this time, however, most American Indians were not considered U.S. citizens. In 1924, the Indian Citizenship Act declared all people born within the territorial limits of the U.S. to be citizens, which allowed American Indians the right to vote in U.S. elections while retaining their tribal citizenship. The effects of this law can still be seen in Wisconsin today, with some Native nations still fighting for federal recognition. Jim Crow laws also play a significant part in keeping many Americans from the polls. African Americans were required to push through additional hurdles to be able to cast a vote. Literacy tests, memorization tasks, and even additional taxes were common. The Voting Rights Act of 1965, plus subsequent legislation in the 70s and 80s, banned any voting law that discriminated against racial or language minorities. Voter suppression, especially of minorities, is still a topic of much debate in Wisconsin and the wider U.S. today. But let's return to the 1920s for a moment. After the passage of the 19th Amendment, many suffragists turned their attention to a new group, getting women elected into office. Although some women had been elected into political office by 1924, the vast majority of politicians in Wisconsin and the U.S. were still men. Cultural and social norms didn't allow most women to participate in the political arena, not to mention the fact that it was incredibly difficult for women to find financial backers for their campaigns. This changed somewhat in the 1970s, during a time of swift cultural transition. Numbers of women in the Wisconsin Assembly, Senate, and Supreme Court exploded during this time. Val Phillips, whose desk we have on display, was a progenitor of this trend. In addition to many firsts, she was the first woman and first African American to be elected to a statewide constitutional office when she became Wisconsin Secretary of State in 1978. To keep this in perspective, however, even at the height of female representation in Wisconsin to date, women have only held about one third of political positions in the state. The passage of the 19th Amendment, while hugely important, did not make everything equal by any means. However, by the time this voting booth was first used around 1970, most women and American Indians could legally step inside and cast a vote. In the South, Jim Crow era voting laws that restricted African Americans were being dismantled. More people could come to the polls than ever before and could vote to continue that trend into the future. 